Life Christian Television presents a special presentation on mental health through a biblical view, Pathway to Healing and Wholeness with your host, Lisa Eddy. Hi, and welcome to Pathways to Healing and Wholeness. I'm your host, Lisa Eddy, certified Christian counselor and life coach and author of the book, The Seven Principles of Healing Trauma. And I just want to invite you to come in today. We have an exciting subject that we're going to learn about today. And we're going to put neuroscience and the Bible together. And we're going to start on a journey to healing and wholeness. Jesus wants you to be whole. He has the power to heal you. And he has put inside of you mechanisms that can bring you healing from trauma, depression, and anxiety. So I invite you to come in as we unpack this subject today, which is one of my favorite subjects to talk about. All throughout the Bible, over 98 times, the Lord mentions gratitude, thankfulness, the art of being thankful. So it seems that it's a pretty important subject. And many times we read things in the Bible and we're like, we understand this is what it says, but why does that work or how does it work? And the beautiful thing is that many times neuroscience, the science of how the brain works, and the Bible go together like hand in glove. So if I told you there was a key to increased happiness and positive mood, more satisfaction with your life, less materialistic, that you could be less likely to experience burnout, have better physical health, better sleep, less fatigue, lower levels of inflammation in your body, greater resiliency when facing hard times, and it encourages you to develop patience and humility. Would you want to know what that was? This is a life-changing thing we're talking about, and it's something as simple as the art of gratitude, the art of being thankful. I love it that when we're practicing gratitude, it actually changes the brain. We talk about how trauma changes the brain often, that we can see it on MRI, that our gray matter is affected by trauma. But you know what? The good side of that is that gratitude does the opposite. It changes our brain for the better with results viewable on MRI. How does this happen? Well, there is something called neuroplasticity, and I'm going to explain it in a very easy way. Our brain, think about it as like a water bottle. You heat a water bottle up, and it can shrink or expand. You, it's pliable. It's malleable. Our brain is very much the same. You know, as we talk about this water bottle, comparing it to the neuroplasticity in our brain, it basically means that our brain is being influenced or shaped or molded every day by what is happening in our life, uh, what we've been through, what we believe, how we speak, how we go through our daily life. So this breakthrough has significantly altered our understanding on how to change habits, how to increase happiness and improve our mood. So what does this mean for you? What does this mean for me? It means you can use your mind to change your brain. We can actively increase our happiness levels. Abraham Lincoln said it like this. He said, people are just as happy as they make up their minds to be, saying that we have the choice. When we think about how this happens, we have to think about the pathways in the brain. 
we have neuropathways. Well, these neurons are like hiking trails. I'm from the country. I think about it like a horse trail. If you have a pasture and horses want to go a certain way, the grass over time begins to be pushed down. So that path becomes easier and easier to go down. Well, that is how trauma, when we think about it over and over, and that is PTSD, when it keeps reoccurring, when we keep thinking about it constantly, our brain automatically goes down that pathway because neuropathways take the path of least resistance. So think about a neuropathway like that hiking trail or like that horse trail. As you focus on it, if you're focusing on the trauma, on what happened, on hard things, on negative things, as you continually focus on them over the days and months, it's like a well-traveled path. So your brain then wants to go there more. Your mind wants to stay in that place, in that negative place, because it is the path of least resistance. So what happens when we add the act of thankfulness, the art of gratitude? It's a beautiful thing that begins to happen when we do this. It makes new pathways, new roads, And as you intentionally do this every day, it makes roads around the trauma memory. Psalms 118 and 29 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. That is part of the act of thankfulness. The art of gratitude is giving thanks Every day, we can find something to be thankful for. If you woke up this morning, you can thank God for that. And as we practice this, whether it's aloud or in a gratitude journal, we begin to build new neuropathways, pathways around the bad experience. This is how the art of gratitude helps heal trauma. It's one of the tools that we use in healing trauma. So think about the more foot traffic a path gets, the easier it is to follow. So the more you practice gratitude and thankfulness, the easier it becomes. Isaiah 43 and 18, we're instructed to remember not the former things. Why? Because of what we just spoke about, the more you go down that path to the former things, to the negative things, the more your brain wants to go to that negative place. But when we do, as the Lord has instructed in Philippians 4 and 8, it says, whatsoever is true, what is honest, just, pure, lovely, and of good report, if there be any virtue... If there be any praise, think on these things because that is building a new neuropathway. As we think about this, there have been many studies done on the art of gratitude, the act of thankfulness. Dr. Carolina Leaf is one of the top-ranking Christian neuroscientist in America, and she has done many studies on this very thing, the act of being thankful, the art of gratitude. And so as she has made this discovery, it literally shows in her study how being thankful changes the composition in your brain. In her study, Dr. Carolina Leaf also put the patients through MRI and could see that the gray matter in their brain increased after a time of keeping a gratitude journal. Think about that. Something as simple as the Lord saying, give praise always, be joyous, think on these things. 
A simple thing that the Lord has commanded us to do changes the composition of our brain. Thankfulness is a powerful weapon in healing trauma. It is a powerful weapon in helping subside depression and anxiety. So how our thoughts and attitudes can actually change our brain and can change the way we think. She says, Dr. Carolina Leaf, that negative thoughts and negative interpretations of life's events affect a chemical reaction in the brain. They cause cortisol, the stress hormone, to rise. Well, the opposite of that is, is when we're thankful, when we practice gratitude, we also have a chemical reaction in the brain to a positive effect. Serotonin, dopamine. These are the happy chemicals that you get when you eat chocolate, when you fall in love. When we are practicing intentionally thankfulness and gratitude, we get that serotonin and dopamine release. It's a powerful thing. So when we choose to have a positive thought or interpret an event in a positive way, we are setting forth that chemical reaction and changing the landscape of our brain. You know, if you're landscaping a yard, you go in, the first thing you do is clean out the brush. You clean out the old leaves, the old plants that are dead. You trim the hedges. And then you begin to add beauty, add flowers, add water. In that same way, you can change the landscape of your brain. Have you been stuck? Maybe for months, maybe for years, maybe for decades. Have you felt stuck in trauma or a childhood that was not good or a divorce or the loss of a job or family member? Simply beginning to practice the art of gratitude and the act of thankfulness, you can begin to be unstuck. You can create a new landscape. There has been study after study on this breakthrough in the last few decades of how thankfulness is a powerful weapon. And not only healing trauma, but changing your future. As you begin to give thanks, then you want to give thanks more, which creates a positive outlook for the future, and you begin to dream again. This implication goes across many levels of life, such as controlling your thought life. We know that we just read in Philippians, it said, think on these things. Well, we know bad thoughts come. And we have no control over what thought comes. But you have control if you let it stay. The bird can fly over, but you don't have to let it nest. And when we begin to practice thankfulness and gratitude, simple thing, we can control our thought life. We can begin to help ourselves manage stress, eradicating toxic thoughts. Think about that eradicating, totally dismantling toxic thoughts. I'm brought to mind the scripture that says, take every thought captive that lifts itself up against the truth. Well, this can help you do that. So I love that we get the instruction from God's wisdom in the Bible and then we can take it and put it by science and it can give us the why, how it works and why it works. We can overcome mental, emotional, and spiritual strongholds by practicing thankfulness and gratitude. We can understand how to maximize our destiny, our potential, and walk into what God has for us. Jesus said, I have come that you would have life and life more abundantly. Practicing gratefulness, gratitude, thankfulness. 
This is one way we step in to that abundant life. It opens the door. And of course, this is just simply the neuroscience that Dr. Carolina Leaf has commented on in her study is just a confirmation of what the Bible already says about the importance of thankfulness, praise, speaking encouraging words, and choosing to focus our mind on good things, on things from above. So in Dr. Carolina Leaf's study, she had people begin to keep a gratitude journal. And I would encourage you, if you have felt stuck, if you have suffered with depression, anxiety, anger, that you begin to keep a gratitude journal. And as she had people keep this gratitude journal, they monitored them over a period of time. And they found that they were happier. They found that they had a more positive outlook on life. That their trauma did not influence their everyday life on the level it had before. And they begin to expect good things from simply writing in a journal each day things they were grateful for and thanking God for the things they had and not focusing on where there was lack or where there was negative or what they didn't have, but they begin to turn their focus to being thankful and grateful. And they saw all these benefits When we express gratitude and receive the same, our brain releases that dopamine and serotonin. So let's practice this now. Let's put this into practice. You at home, you can do this. It's very simple. All we say is, Father, today we are thankful. And then you can just begin to name the many blessings that you are thankful for. It's something you can do right now. It's very simple, but it has a huge impact on your mental health. Here on Pathway to Healing and Wholeness, it's all about mental health and how as a Christian, we can increase our mental health levels where we can have emotional healing and well-being. And this is just one simple thing that you can do. And you can do it right now in your home. So by consciously practicing gratitude every day, you help those pathways we talked about, those neuro pathways, to strengthen themselves. They get stronger and they get stronger. That grass on the path gets worn down more and more. And they ultimately begin to create a permanent, grateful, and positive nature within yourself. It is not happiness that brings us to gratitude, but it is gratitude that brings us to happiness. It's easy to be thankful when everything is going right. But when things are not going right, maybe we've had a bad day, the act of gratitude brings us in to a state of happiness not the opposite, not waiting until we're happy to be grateful, but being grateful and that producing happiness. If I were to ask you, would you like to be happier in your life? I would assume the answer would be yes. We all want to experience the joy of the Lord. We want to experience a happy life. Um, Dr. Carolina Leaf also polled people and asked them, would you like health or happiness? Both very important things that I believe are essential for life. Do you know that the majority wanted to be happy? And I'm giving you a simple solution based in the Bible, backed up by science, that says, If you'll just be grateful, if you'll just practice thankfulness, if you'll just begin to thank the Lord every day, whether it's written in a journal or aloud or even better, both, you can find a pathway to happiness. You can reduce stress. You can relieve physical pain. 
So gratitude releases toxic emotions. How does it do that? Well, the hypothalamus is where we carry our emotional experiences. And we talked about making a new pathway around the bad experiences. It's very simple science. When we begin to thank God, you just make a new pathway. So as I told you, it's visible on MRI. So this isn't something, when you set a goal, and you set a SMART goal, you want to gauge it by something. How do we know this project was a success? Well, this has been gauged by MRI, that it is proven a success. So I would challenge you, say for the next seven days, you try this. Every morning when you arise, you begin to say what you're grateful for, write what you're thankful for. And then journal, engage how your attitude, how your mental health, how your relationships, and your overall quality of life begin to shift over the next week as you do that every day. So friends, I challenge you to try and do that. Because people who express and feel gratitude have that higher volume of gray matter that we need. So there was one study of people that, by Dr. Carolina Leaf, that just said their thankfulness. And then there was a study of people who wrote gratitude letters um, to people they were thankful for, to the Lord for what they were thankful for, and to the group that had written the gratitude letters their anxiety and depression greatly reduced. We have many Americans um, who are on anxiety and depression medication that is much needed. And think about that this act helped lessen that. Counting our blessings rather than counting our burdens. I told you that gratitude helps you have a greater quality sleep. So the old saying, if you can't sleep, count sheep. If you really want to help your sleep, count your blessings instead. Because it helps our overall physical well-being. 16% of the patients in the study who kept a gratitude journal reported reduced physical pain and were more willing to work out and cooperate with their anxiety and depression treatment. Gratitude improves our sleep. There was a study done by Dr. Zan that says a brain filled with gratitude and kindness is more likely to sleep better and wake up feeling refreshed and energetic every morning. Would you like more energy? Who wouldn't? We're up, we're needing energy to get through our day. Well, you could sleep better if you are practicing gratitude and thankfulness. It aids in stress regulation, and we talked about that. Dr. McCrady and his colleagues cited in his study in 2004 on their study of gratitude and appreciation found that participants who felt grateful showed a marked reduction in the level of cortisol, the stress hormone. They had better cardiac functioning and were more resilient to emotional setbacks and negative experiences. Think about that, better cardiac function. Just another benefit of being grateful, of practicing the art of thankfulness, that we could have better cardiac function Significant studies over the years have established the fact that by practicing gratitude, you can handle stress better. This is a busy world. Stress is going to come. It's not about trying to stop the wave. Imagine standing in an ocean and trying to stop the waves. It's impossible. But what you can do is ride the wave, handle the wave, and wait it out. Stress is like that. It comes, but it will pass. 
But if you are practicing gratitude and thankfulness, you are going to be able to handle that stress in a much more productive way. Gratitude reduces anxiety and depression for the same reason. It releases the toxic negative emotions. It releases the good feeling hormones, dopamine and serotonin. And when that happens, it reduces the anxiety and depression. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ, 1 Thessalonians 12, 16 and 18. If we do that, rejoice always, give thanks in all circumstances, we're going to see the benefits that we have spoken about today. In Dr. Carolina's study, it showed that for many patients, practicing gratitude and thankfulness was as effective as a low-dose antidepressant. That's why it's mentioned over 98 times in the Bible. This is a powerful way to battle angerness, bitterness, and unforgiveness if you practice the art of thankfulness. Just like in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18, give thanks in all circumstances. Expressing gratitude, the quality of being thankful, will cause your brain to change and change the landscape. The feel-good neurotransmitters will be released. Toxic emotions will be released. It will reduce your pain and improve your sleep. In Psalm 104, it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. As we practice thanksgiving and praise, we enter the presence of the Lord. And in his presence, there is fullness of joy. If you are suffering, there are many resources available that we will post in the credits where you can get free help. You can always ask your pastor um, for reference for pastoral counsel. And if you are struggling... You can call the suicide hotline, which is just simply 988. That is also a crisis lifeline if you need somebody to talk to. So we thank you for joining us on Pathway to Healing and Wholeness. I pray that you are well. I pray that you take this lesson on gratitude and apply it to your life and that it radically changes your surroundings. Until next time. The advice on this program is not intended to replace that of psychiatric care. If you or someone you know needs help, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Dial 988 or 1-800-273-8255. You can also go to suicidepreventionlifeline.org.